One subject that people seem to be quite fascinated about, especially music students, is Wagner's Tristan chord. And we often hear about the Tristan chord problem. Now, this comes from a work, Tristan and Isolde. And the idea of the work is that the chords and the melodies represent, you know, they act like kind of symbols. And they help to describe what's going on in this play that we see as being, we would call it an opera, but Wagner himself called it a drama. So, the Tristan chord itself represents the character of Tristan, and it represents yearning and longing and... Uh, it has a specific function, it has a harmonic function, and it has a, an emotional function. Part of Wagner's writing at the time, um, during the Ring Cycle, he'd already written two, two of the main operas from the Ring Cycle, and he was on to the third, which was the Siegfried part, and then he started, halfway through writing it, he started to develop this kind of, what people called a chromatic style. So there's a lot of leading notes and a lot of wandering. So now the problem is that when Wagner wrote his Tristan chord, he wrote it like this. F, B, D sharp, and G sharp. Now, if this really was an F half diminished chord or an F minus seven flat five chord, and we're not going to worry about the tonology so much at the moment, we would write it F, C flat, E flat, A flat. Of course, now we've got an enharmonic equivalence there here, and G sharp and A flat being the same pitch. The sounding the same, the D sharp and the E flat sounding the same again, and another N harmonic, an N harmonic here, a C flat and a B, and then obviously the F's the same. This one really is a minor seven flat five functioning as, for instance, chord seven in the key of G flat major. So we can't say that this has that specific function, uh, and we have to look at where this Tristan chord is going. Uh, in order to understand it. So one of the basic definitions is, is that it's a kind of F minus 7 flat 5. The other way of defining it would be using, say, these two notes as your clue and saying that we've got some sort of B chord. So we've got a D sharp and we've got a kind of fifth because we've got the F. So we've got a kind of flat 5. And then when you think, right, okay, so we've accounted for the B, we've accounted for the D, we've accounted for the F, so now we have to just account for the G sharp. So it's some kind of six chord. The G sharp will act as, you know, a, a sixth of some sort. So without worrying about it too much, it's some sort of, it's not so much a regular B chord because we've got this flat five. So... And this was long before we started thinking in terms of tritone substitutions, you know, in other words, jazz harmony to solve problems. So not an ideal solution. So in other words, is the Tristan chord really a chord? One of the other functions of this chord is just to say that it functions as it is, and then it moves towards the next chord in the series. And I'll write that out now. And the next chord in the series, E, G sharp, D natural, and then on top, the melody line is going A sharp to B. So we end up with an E7 chord, E major third and then the seventh there, and then the fifth. We do have momentary in appoggiatura. It's, it's passing towards B and resting on B. And in between this, you've got this other melody note up the top. So we've got this kind of chromatic movement from G sharp towards B. So we're moving upwards here. We've got the D sharp moving slightly downwards, resolving to a, a D natural. The B doesn't go anywhere, even though we know that B is theoretically up here, 
we could in theory say that we've got kind of got like an, a theoretical opposing motion in a way to this chromatic line going upwards so we could think of it as a chromatic line going downwards even though it's not there we could kind of say right well that's what's happening with the voicing it's falling downwards from b to g sharp and then you've got your f falling to e so we've got some chord that is just just pointing in the certain direction that one's pointing upwards that one's pointing downwards a little bit this one's pointing downwards and this one also pointing downwards so you've got this push and pull and in a way it represents the strains and the you know the tension that's involved in romance and this is what Wagner was reading at the time he's reading Schopenhauer the will and idea you know the idea that you know life is full of turmoil and it's full of being pulled one way and then the other and, and so this is the idea of love and romance so this chord, in a way, is less of a functional chord, but it's more of a gesture moving in a particular direction towards something that's in itself unresolved, a 5-7 chord. So we've got the dominant chord, so this is pointing, because our original starting note, it starts on a dum du dum dum so you've got this dum 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 and then you've got this so here you've got the melody line going into the, into the actual D sharp, but then you've got the oboes you can hear up the top going. So you've got two distinct lines as now. So you've got this line and you've got that line. So when people talk about the Tristan chord, we actually mean the three Tristan chords, B, F, G sharp, G sharp, which resolves to E7. Then we have the next one. So this one is in bar two. And then bar six. So we've got an A flat. D. an F sharp, and a B, and then later on, we've got a C, an F, G sharp, and D. So again, you can see this kind of major relationship B to D sharp. Here you can see that relationship there, but here you can see a distinct change. So the, the, the relationship between the, when you get here and you've got the F chord and we're calling it, if you, people, when people call it an F minor seven, they're thinking that the G sharp here and the F are, you know, like the G sharp is acting as a as a minor third in this chord. Um, so, and you've got a similar thing going on here. Um, so, between these two notes. So it helps us to decipher what is going on uh, between the... Um, So we're starting to see that this this chord here is in a different inversion. So we've got this sort of F minor thing going on, and we've got this thing going on. So we've we've effectively got a chord that ends up resolving to B, and it's like a B7 it ends up resolving to. Now, if we were thinking that the 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 original Tristan chord here is some sort of B chord, which makes it a secondary dominant of E7, because it's going to go to E7. This is going to go towards G7, and this one heads towards B7.
So I said earlier that the chords, the Tristan chords, are left unresolved. They, they go to a dominant chord and then they're kind of left in suspense and then they just move on. And so the prelude itself doesn't get to resolve. And this chord appears again, for instance, in the second act and it's about to resolve and then Tristan is older, they get interrupted. Uh, so you don't get to hear the, the actual resolution until the very end of the work. So we have to wait all the way to the end of the third act. And uh, I will demonstrate that now to you with my own version on guitar. And you'll hear the way that it finally is allowed to settle and find a home key. Now imagine if we had another way of describing these chords. And this is the way that I started to experiment with music to see if it was possible to kind of treat it like a code. So I imagined that instead of it being F, I called that six. B, I called 12. D sharp, four, G sharp, nine. So what am I saying here? Is that C equals one, D flat equals two, uh, D equals three, and so on. So I'm giving them numbers, and I'm saying that C is one, uh, and, and I just experimented because I thought, well, C is the first note, you know, like in when you're thinking of C major or the, the, the naturals and sharps, and when you think about all of the keys, you know, uh, and atonality, everything starts with a blank key signature. In other words, everything starts at C. And if you go through and you, you give all of these... Um, numbers and you end up you know e equals five f equals six you know g equals eight a equals ten b equals twelve and so on so we take our next tristan chord we've got a flat D, F sharp, and B, which is nine, three, seven, twelve. The sum of this chord, eighteen. 22, 31, the sum of this chord, 9 plus 3 is 12, 8 plus 7 is 19, plus 12 is 31. So I started to wonder, well, what, how, how come these two chords in two different keys add up to the same number, 31 and 31? So then I thought, well, why don't we look at the final chord in the series, C, 
and F G sharp and D. Now you might be thinking, well, I wonder if it, would that add up to thirty-one? Well, it's actually one six nine three. So that's seven sixteen. So it adds up to nineteen. Our three numbers here get us to 81. So I was left with this number, 81. And I thought, well, you know, originally I, just, I was just analysing things and looking at numbers and thinking, well, what's the significance of this? So I want you to remember this number, 81. Okay, so now bear with me, because I'm now going to write the alphabet out and give each one a number. So we're going to start with A, and then we're going to have B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Now normally that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I'm going to write the rest out. So anything that's in this column here is a 1. Anything that's in this column here is a 2. Anything that's in this column here is a 3. Here is a four, five, six, and so on. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we have got and now I've got a system of the alphabet. So we can look and analyze things like the characters in the play, you know, or the title, or you know, anything. And you could start to look for, you know, in 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 other words, you're looking for cryptograms. We could analyze T R I S T A N. So T is an eight, R six, I nine. S, seven, T, is an eight, A, is a one, N is a two. Now we end up with eight plus six is 14, 23, 30, 38, 39, 41. Doesn't get us anywhere near to those other three numbers that we were looking at from the Tristan chords. So we've got 41 there. So we know that 41 represents Tristan, let's say, just for argument's sake. So Tristan equals 41. What about Isolde? I Nine S seven O three L twelve D or E five. 9 plus 7, 16, 19, 31, 35. So Isolde equals 40.
Tristan and is older. 41 plus 40 equals 81. The sum of the names Tristan and is older could be argued as being 41 plus 40 equals 81. The sum of the three Tristan chords. Tristan equals 41. And if you remember the Tristan chords, the first Tristan chord, 31 plus 31 plus 19 equals 81. Weird, huh? Now, if you think it's weird, what I started to do was look for evidence of cryptograms in the work. Now, at some point in the... when Tristan... If you know the story, Tristan ends up on this ship and he's in disguise. And while he was on the ship, and his older was on the ship, so he used the disguise name. Tan... Tris. What people call a syllabic reversal, Tris Tan. Now, when you count, when, say, Tristan sings, his older sings, whoever sings first, you could say, right, well, that's the first entry, and then someone else comes in and sings, that's the second entry. There's an odd number that occurs when, of the line that the word Tantris occurs. So, as you know, Tantris obviously will equal the same as Tristan, it will equal 41. So the first line is the voice of a young sailor. That's the entry number one. The second entry is is old, and then it goes on until you end up at entry number forty-one. In this entry, which is the forty-first entry, she starts singing. The answer reached me clearly. No word escaped my ear, and now you all know my shame. So here, to how it arose, and she goes on to say. The wound that caused his torment, with tender care she cured. I'm Tantris. He hoped that the name disguised him. The 41st entry where the name Tantris is mentioned, the secret name of Tristan, the syllabic reversal, the code word. Here's where the code word occurs, number 41 signifying the 41 relationship. Tristan is 41, is older as 40, the total of which is 81, and then you'd have to go on to find musical notes that would represent these chords to make some kind of harmonic sense and yet still be a cryptogram that would add up to 81 and they would correspond between the two styles. So in other words, you have an all-encompassing theory between the letters of the alphabet and the musical notes. So you have a 1 to 12 alignment there and a 1 to 12 alignment there. 12 alignment for the 12 musical notes and a 12 alignment there for the letters of the alphabet.